Tracy Crafting People. It's Tracy Reed here today coming at you with the follow-up to my last video, which was this pocket page layout um, created for my little series that I'm doing where I'm um, overcoming the scrapbooking blocks that I am encountering with older layouts in my album. So this was one from Summer and I worked on this one in the last video. So if you haven't watched it already, it is in this playlist. Um, so this is the companion 9 by 12 page. These are always, I take this photo every summer. I love it. This is our third summer in, this was our third summer in Knoxville. And I just try and capture them jumping off of the dock at the quarry that we swim at every year. And so I am going to um, scrap up this one. It is printed a bit larger. Like if we compare it here to this four by six, it's like a five by seven probably. Oh no, yeah, a five by seven ish. And so it's a little bit of an enlargement. And um, I told the story of the trip on this card. So I'm actually gonna focus my story on how I take this photo every summer um, and how, it, how fun it is to watch them grow and change every summer um, when I take this photo. I could do, you know, I could create a layout that has them um, every summer with this with this photo, but I already printed it this way. And I'll think I'll tell that story next year. I'll compare all of the photos maybe next year and do it that way. Um, anyway, so I need to create a four by six layout that will match, or four by six, a nine by 12 layout that will match this pocket page. So I'm gonna keep this here for a moment while I choose my papers and uh, let's get rolling. Okay, Dicky. So the first thing I need to do, of course, is build my 9 by 12 background. So I'm pulling in some papers. I have the Cocoa Daisy papers that I used on the right hand side, but I'm going to pull in this Echo Park paper from the collection that um, I wanted to use the icons for but they don't match very well. But this blue paper matches really well because it's actually a really like subtle blue that really does well with the blues in the two cards on the right hand side there. You can see them kind of covering up. So I'm gonna go with that. But I felt like I needed some white to ground um, the, lay the layout and also to match the white on the right hand side. So I'm going to cut down this Pink Fresh Studio, this old Pink Fresh Studio paper, and it has birds on it, but I'm gonna cover them up. And I'm gonna cut an inch and a half in from both sides because I need to cut off uh, three inches total to make it nine inches. Um, but I wanted to make sure that those birds were right in the center so they would get covered up. And so I took off an inch and a half from both sides so there would be no birds on the outside edges. I'm gonna mat the photo with the orange from the right hand side to bring both sides together. And I'm gonna actually make it super thin because I felt like it really enhanced the orangeness of the photo already. So I wanted to make sure that it wasn't too much. And I'm gonna uh, be up front that this layout was actually sort of a struggle for me. Um, I do like the end product, but just like I struggled with the pocket page side, um, I had a problem with a lack of icons and more words than icons and um, it really tripped me up for a while but I figured it out and pulled it together. I'm really sad that I don't get to use the floral side of this paper because that's what I bought that paper for but that that plaid just works so perfectly. So this is a photo of my two boys jumping in and so I really like the idea of um, with the words that I choose, like capturing summer joy, that kind of a thing. So that's kind of where I'm going to head here. And then I also want, I've got a really straight edge going on so far, and I want to um, mimic the angled paper sort of thing from the right hand side. So that's what I'm going to do with this green mat is I'm going to angle it on the paper and have it sort of go off of the edge and then I'm going to angle my photo as well. So it kind of mimics the angled photos on the pocket page side. Then I decided that there was just too much green up there at the top so of course the lazy me is going to just trim it right off after it's stuck. I'm using my the dots on the paper as a guide to follow so it was it's somewhat straight. 
but it's okay if it's not all the way straight because a lot of it's going to get covered up anyway. I keep trying to incorporate this yellow, but it's not working. And you can see me sit there and go, okay, now what? And so I'm going to pull out my summary stuff again, and I really want to use this tag. I tried to use it on the pocket page side, and it didn't work out. So I want to use it on this side. So I pull it out, and I've got some clusters that I created in a DIY Your Scraps video, but I'm not going to be able to incorporate those. So I pull out this pocket, and I, I admit, I always struggle using these clear pockets that Coco Daisy includes in some of their, it's mostly in the uh, planner kits, but also they've come in the Traveler's Notebook kits before, but I was like, I can incorporate some hidden journaling with this pocket, because I didn't like that summer feeling at the bottom, but I really like the yellow stripes at the top. So that gave me a really cool base for some hidden journaling. So I stuck it up behind that pocket and it's, or I mean it behind the, the picture and it's all tilted like with the tag too. So that works with the whole layering theme I'm going for. And now I'm just gonna start building up um, some layers just like on the other side. And again, I have to end up having to turn off the camera for a little while and just play because I just struggle with getting this layering right. I think partly because um, I had so much empty space on the bottom and that was really bothering me because I knew I was going to be hiding journaling so I didn't have any like journaling to put in there and I wasn't sure on like what kind of title I wanted to put in there so I was struggling a bit with finding a way to bridge the gap between the photo and that bottom edge because I normally I'm not a huge like I don't love just like having a central cluster and nothing hitting the edges and like not having any flow through the page. There's a lot of scrapbookers that do that really well, but it's not really my thing. So if I have something at the bottom, I like to bridge it to the central cluster and really I need to have something that's like touching every edge because I just, I just do. It's just the way that I am. So I'm pulling out, um, everyday embellishments out of this bowl that I keep on my desk and I really liked this here's the story I had two different variations of this here this here's the story sentiment and I liked it because it would like point out that there was hidden journaling and so I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate it I initially was thinking that I would staple it to the journaling card that I put in that pocket and use it as like a pull but that just really didn't work out the way that I wanted it to so um, I, I'm just trying to figure out what it is that I want to do up there. And so I have this journaling card and it says this magical moment or no, this magic moment. And it's the pocket itself is three by four. So you actually have to have a bit smaller of a journaling card. So I'm trimming it down and it fits. And so you can see that it just doesn't look right if I try and use it as a tab to pull and so I'm going to end up going with the circle, but I'm just going to adhere it behind the journaling card so that um, it points it out, but it doesn't actually move with the journaling card. And I really wanted to add in that moment, too, because I really liked the idea of the black and white, especially with the black and white card. That's why I was going back and forth between that hexagon and the circle as well, because I was trying to incorporate more black and white into it. So I've turned off the pay or turned off the camera and gone through other stuff to see what I can work in here. And I I really liked that sentiment of that ready for takeoff because they're in midair. And so even though they're not traveling, um, I just thought it was appropriate and fun. And I'm extending the green below the photo with just that little paper strip there because I thought it would balance it a little bit better. And I moved that yay high five down to the bottom with the beach um, chipboard. And so you can see that I'm starting to get a little bit of a bridge between the top or the central cluster and the bottom. And I'm going to arch my letter stickers around that yay high five in a minute, in a second here. There we go. And so it's still not quite touching, not quite bridging that gap in a way that makes me happy. And it's really bothering me. It's funny how just some things will just really bother you and it, that is bothering me. And so 
after I stop fussing with this title, I'm going to start adding things to the bottom of this cluster to like tr try and get there. The summer days ended up going on crooked, so I have to pull it up and fix it, which was annoying because it was on a photo, so it did not want to come up. It left all the cardboard, but that's okay because I was just putting it right back down. So I just trimmed up the cardboard as much as I could and then re-adhered it straight. There we go. So I, I'm going to add some this moments down to the bottom of this ready for takeoff. And I have these stickers from Crate Paper, and I like this blue sticker because it adds to the blue, but again, it's just not quite bridging the gap the way that I want. So I just end up giving up <laughs> and turning off my camera and starting to, I start putting away my embellishments and all of that, putting things into pockets and just like moving on. And I take a second look at the embellishments on the Echo Park papers or the Echo Park sticker pad, whatever, 12 by 12 sticker sheet, um, and decide that a few of them actually will work. So I'm going to pull in this camera and these flip flops and that makes me happier. Like I like the icons here. And then I'm going to pull in some sunglasses and make them work too. And that just made me way happier and I enjoy this layout a lot more than I did without the icons. And I'm going to switch over to live voiceover so you can see both pages together and how it all came out after I stopped fussing with this. All right, here we go. Let's switch over. So here is the finished spread. You can see, um, again, like I was speaking about, the icons are minimal, which uh, makes me a little bit frustrated, but... I think the whole thing came together really well. I love this like flip up. I love the amount of blue that ended up on here to really break up all of this teal and green. And um, if you remember in the beginning, like it was just like a big blob of green and teal and it was really bothering me. So I incorporated a lot of color into both sides of this, but in a way that wasn't overwhelming because the photos were so bright and colorful that I really needed to tone down the whole thing and bring it back from that super colorful, like over the edge sort of a thing. So I made sure to incorporate a lot of white into the spread, which white isn't really a color that I scrapbook with a lot because, um, I don't know. I just, I love color, right? So it's not something that I, that I incorporate a ton into my layouts um, on purpose, I would say. I do incorporate it because obviously it's hard to get away from white um, in scrapbooking, but like I, I purposefully added white to this spread to really break up that color. I took these photos um, of Finn and Joe that were really repetitive and layered them in a fun and happy way and hid one set of them so it was less repetitive. And I really love how it came together. Um, I went from something that was not making me happy to something that makes me really happy, which is always the point, right? So I hope you are enjoying this sort of peek into my overcoming my scrap block sort of um, process. If you are, let me know in the comment section below. If you're getting anything out of this, I would love to hear it. I always love your comments because they make me so happy. They're always so kind. Um, but I also like helping too. So if you have questions, if you have something that you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you. And if you don't already, you can follow me over on Instagram. I am at Tracy M. Reed. I would love to see you over there as well. And I will see you next time. Thank you.